fast forward to sign language. Okay. Because that, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that was the film I saw most recently, and I thought, blimey, that, that's a really fantastic piece of work. Okay. Just brilliantly written by Stephen, brilliantly executed um, by yourself, and I know it's in the running um, for um, some big prizes with this read competition. Mm. Just tell us very, very briefly how that came into being. How it came into being. So I heard about the competition uh, a good few months before it happened. And I, having worked with Stephen before and won something with him before, um, I thought, well, you know, that's a collaboration I want to maintain. And actually, um, I'd also I'd made another thing with him which he had produced. Um, and I wasn't completely happy with the, with the results. It was something where I was, I had this kind of, God, I, I think I can do better than that. Right. And I kind of wanted to work with him again as soon as possible to really go, no, I can, I can do this, you know, to, to, a, to the standard I expected myself at this stage. Um, and yeah, he, uh, I said, look, it's got to be about the workplace. That's all we've got. Um, to throw me some ideas. And this is because Reed, whether Reed is a is a is a recruitment agency. Um, agency. Yes. So it's a commercial competition, really. Yes. With, you know, they want the advertising and the connection, and you want the. Yeah, but these these there's a lot of these competitions around these days. It's like it's become pretty widespread, and it's how a lot of young filmmakers like me, which young, I'm thirty now, but um, a lot of beginning filmmakers um, uh, start making their way. Actually, it's, it's sort of altered a bit. It's shifted somewhat from short film land, but that still exists. But there's like a split developing. I don't know if you've noticed. Um, with these competitions and they they it's kind of branded content it's kind of commercials but it's not really because most of the competitions they go it's a sh it's short films we don't want ads and what's been odd about that competition is that quite a lot of the entrants were just they were ads they clearly made ads for read um, some of them have been shortlisted but on the whole they shortlisted more short right. films um, but the short films tend to have like nods to the company and right. so on and they tend to be on as you say they prescribe the subject matter they say my workplace is wonderful a wonderful workplace so on the whole they want a positive picture of working that's obviously as you say is sort yeah. of suitable to their brand anyway um, but it's some, there's some freedom and you don't have to feel like you're just right. prostituting yourself so I said to him, what, what, Stephen, what have you got? What's, what's an idea to do with the workplace? And he said, I have this old... He pitched me a few, but one of them was, I have this old idea that I've had for years about a guy who holds a golf sign um, and uh, I think and him being in love with a girl who was flying. Right. I think that was in the original right. A golf idea. sign being one of those signs that you, you, know, you pay a guy to stand in the street that yeah. says, you know, car wash this way, golf sale that exactly. way. Exactly, yes, that which, kind of which used to be very common on Oxford Street in central London and isn't so much now precisely because they banned them. Um, it took them a long time to ban them. It took a long time to get rid of them, but they are now gone, although there are a few people who find their way around the rules right. and do similar things. Anyway, so, um, yeah, the, I, he pitched me some stuff... I sort of said, right, well, I like the premise, but I don't think it's a story yet. Write me a first draft. He writes a first draft. I read that and go, this sort of works, but throw me more ideas. And we had this one particularly seminal conversation, seminal, important conversation in the history of the thing, where he's throwing me stuff. And then he comes up with a thing that I think when, all, when people see it, they will know what I mean by the, the big ending or whatever, but like the way that makes the ending work. And he, he said that, and I was like, that's the one. You've just, you've found, it moved me, which yeah. is the big trick to, for finding these things. I went, okay, I'm getting a rush off that. He was just one of his many ideas, and I just went, that's the one. Nail that in, put, make that the, 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 the big climax or whatever. Right. Write the film around it. So he did another draft. Then I'm very, very heavy on structure, and I kind of, my big thing is always, I do write some stuff, and I'm, I'm story obsessed. I sort of, Rip apart the, the the kind of you know the story gurus the sort of uh, the John Trubys and the and the and the Sid Fields and so on most of their stuff is through a process of um, derivation based on the work of the Russian formalists uh, people like Prop and um, Todorov and I'm completely obsessed with that material um, and some other things a bit like it and so I just I kind of threw some of that at what Stephen was doing and we restructured a lot right. Um, I'm sounding very pretentious. <laughs> I am massive. Well, look, let, let's 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 shift into <laughs> yeah. into how you, you made it because it was shot on a Canon 7D. Yes. And how, how was that experience? Because of course you shot it in in Oxford Street in the middle of the winter yeah. yes. without you know them actually giving you the permission oh, to we do have, so. We had permission. You had no. Yeah. You had the police, didn't you? But we had. I think we had everything. You'll have to ask Tian and the producer, but right. he's very good, and he right. he said, "Yeah, got it all." Right. Yeah. Or right. everything that you need. Everything which is, that you need. Now, what you need is that's the that's, that's the interesting to what they bit. Yeah. Is whether you have it or whether yeah. you, everything that you have to have, and maybe what they would want you to have is different. Um, if I've understood correctly, and like I said, I'm very pleased to have the 
the very brilliant in and Hanby, Hanby sorting all this out because he's an extremely skilled producer. Um, he, uh, but from what, from what I remember, basically, if you don't have any trailing cables or any other kind of obstruction, if you're not creating any kind of obstruction, the public highway, you're completely free to shoot on. It is the public highway. It's not any private, anyone's private land. It's the moment so you put a tripod down. The moment you put a tripod down, which we didn't do, the moment you have any cables trailing anyway, which we didn't do, um, then you kind of can do what you want, right. except, of course, then you get other issues to do with what you're shooting and privacy and, and, yeah, yeah. and, and data protection and that kind of thing. But that's down the line. That isn't the act of shooting at all, yeah. um, which you can still do. It's just you, what can you use that footage for. So we... Um, yeah, I think we we had everything we needed, which is several people because you've got the council and the police. But then you with Oxford Street, you also have something that I think is called the Westminster Company or something right. like that. And there is a private company, if I'm right about this, that owns Oxford Street or not owns it, but like yeah. runs all of the shops. All the shops work have got okay. one company. Like so let, let's let's go back to the Seven D. How did yes. you find the experience of, of shooting on the Seven D? Well, I didn't shoot this. It was shot by Anthony Gurner. Right. No, I mean you, the director. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. How did I find the Seven D? I think the 7D, um, yeah, it was, we had a little test shoot beforehand. I made Anthony meet me and show it to me because I, I loved the idea of it. I use a, an XHA1, which is one of Canon's smaller um, HDV cameras. So I've been watching the development of the SLRs with excitement and interest. Obviously, I would love to have a 5D or a 7D. And I, at the moment, can't afford one. But um, when I saw that Anthony had a 7D, one of the most interesting things was he told me he sold his XHA1 to get a 7D. So that was his upgrade from my camera. And we had a meet-up and we wandered around the street and he showed me what it could do. It's a lot to do with what lenses you have. He has got a kit of about five or six of them. Right. Um, and he chooses very well. The way that we did the film, as you say, we had like this very tight shoot on a winter's day. It was We, we, we had to wrap before sundown. I had to go and be interviewed in a similar way to this that day by the hospital club who were going to looking for a creative in residence um, so I had to leave my own set at this sort of particular time so you had this very compressed period to do it in and um, so what that meant which is a totally new thing for me is I just said I did a few bits with Anthony made sure I loved what he was doing and then went from there on in I, I trust you I you know I want this to feel I described to him what it should feel like and approximately what it and framed a few shots with him and from there on in it was it was right. just he was off the leash right um and I loved doing that actually for a fast shoot because then you don't actually you're just free of worrying about the picture and normally right. I worry about the picture intensely and I just because of course you can't really look at the picture, can you, in the way that you would would with a, another camera? Yes, you, you it's have, there on the back of it. It's a bit like shooting film again, isn't mm. it? It's like you have to let go and, and let those creative people do their job properly. What's interesting is that he initially he, he so, almost couldn't handle that. He could well, he could handle it, but that wasn't his instinct. So he kept trying to stop me and show me what he just shot because that's he wants my approval. But I just had to like hold him by the shoulders and go seriously. There isn't time. I like your work, I trust you. Um, and from there on in, you know, on we right. went. And it's because I knew that he could give me the style I wanted, which in part was that sort of rough feel. Um, right. I sort of, I've had this thing in my head for a while, a friend of mine, a music, musician called Robert Drinkwater, who did the music for another film called Slidey Man, which is on my YouTube channel next to all these other ones, um, who's, who was quite brilliant. And he said to me, he's a good friend, and he said, um, that he uses, he always remembers something that Leonard Cohen said. Um, it's a quote from one of his songs, and it's, ring the bells that still can ring, forget your perfect offering, there's a crack, a crack in everything, and that is where the light gets in. I'm being so fucking pretentious today. Yeah. But I do, I love that idea that everything's a bit broken, and just, that's where the joy comes from. Right. And that's, that was my kind of touchstone with the, with the film, was just like, it should be a bit shoddy, yeah. and that's why it will breathe, and why it will, have right. some love in it. Right.